So the wheels are going to need a little, they're not, they're not exactly tricky. Um, just got to keep track of a couple of things here. So what I'm going to do here is just go in my geometry folder and select the main body group and just control H to hide it. Okay, so that we, we're not having to see that. So the front wheels obviously are the turning wheels um, and then the rear wheels don't turn. So we're going to need a series of three joints in the front and only two in the back because we don't turn. So I'm going to just start by making, so if we come skeleton, create joints, and just hit, uh, let's see here, hold down X and make a single joint, just snap it to the grid there, and then hit enter. Okay, I'm going to turn on my uh, wireframe on shaded here so I can see this. So move tool, I'm going to grab this joint, hold down V and just middle mouse drag it till it snaps to that center point of the wheel right there. Okay, then what I'm going to do is come into my front view here, turn on wireframe, and I want this joint to be centered to the wheel. So holding down V, I'm going to constrain to X, grab X, start to move, and then move my uh, cursor or my mouse down to this point here just so that it aligns to that point and then it's nicely uh Nicely aligned to that, so it's centered to the wheel uh, on both axes that way and down and uh, this way, the center of the tire this way, and then also the center of the wheel, like the rotation, the rotation center. Okay, so duplicate that, Control D, just move this one back a little bit. Doesn't need to be too super accurate. These joints are a little bit big, so what I'm going to do is just take both of them and put like a 0.3 in here. That should do, just to lower the radius. Okay, and then the third joint so just like this one control D and move this one back here now this car does not have the, the whole turning mechanism that you would have if you were if this was a very serious look high resolution film quality model you might have all this the, the mechanics mechanical stuff in the wheels that that actually turns the wheels you might have all that set up and you'd have to rig that you know uh, a little bit more seriously. For this, we don't have any of that stuff. So I'm just going to approximate the pivot point of the wheel turning. So, you know, it's probably somewhere right in about here. Okay, so that's fine for this. Again, if this was a more serious uh, heavy rig, then you, you'd want it, to, it'd be a different sort of setup for rigging. But this is very simple. So this is our turning joint here. So this is our left front uh, turn joint. This one is left, left front manual. So this is a manual spin joint. Oops. Okay, so we're going to be able to spin this wheel manually just by, by adjusting an attribute. And then we're also going to be able to have it spin automatically. And this is the auto spin joint. So this one is a left front auto spin joint okay so this joint is going to control automatic spinning this joint is going to control manual spinning so i can increase or decrease an attribute and then this joint is the actual one that we use for turning and we're going to parent these joints to each other so i just select my uh auto joint here shift select my manual joint and hit p so that auto joint is now a child of the manual spin joint then, same deal here, select the manual spin joint, shift select the turn joint, and hit P. So, what this does basically is, as the wheel is rotating uh, automatically, you can then add rotation to it by adjusting the manual spin joint. Or, you can turn off automatic rotation and just have it all come from the uh, <coughs> manual spin joint. Okay, so for example, if you want to spin your tires as the car is taking off, well, if you have automatic rotation turned on and you move the car forward, it's just going to rotate the correct amount to move the car forward. It's not going to spin like you would expect. So you'd plug that extra bit of spin into the manual uh, spin joint. So that's the, that's the setup we're going to go for. So turning joint. Uh, let's go in the attribute editor. We're just going to set our rotation order to ZXY. So ZXY, meaning that the... The y-axis is the up and down one becomes the most important axis because rotate order 
uh, the way joints are evaluated, they evaluate from the last axis that way. So the y axis is going to be evaluated first. That's so that's going to be kind of the main axis. And the so if I go to this view, so the turning is going to happen on that y axis. So that's why I put that one there. And then the x x axis, like the middle joint, is going to be the second most important, and the the z because we're never going to have the wheel do this. So that one is the least important of the three. Okay, so now we need to orient our wheels here. So we're going to go to skeleton, uh, orient joint, open this up, hit orient joint to world, and hit orient. Nothing, if something may or may not change depending on how you drew the joints. Okay, um, so that is that is our front setup right here. Then what we can do is just duplicate this turn joint and we're going to move this to the back here and what we want to do is align that to the center of the wheel here so if I hold down V and in this axis put my mouse over there that should align it now obviously in the perspective it's hard to tell if that's truly aligned so we can go in our uh, side view here and you can see that it is aligned to the center of that wheel this is very important that you align your joints to the center of the wheel if they're slightly off you're going to get a wobbly wheel if you want it to spin perfectly on its axis, you want to make sure that that's perfectly aligned. Okay, so that is that. Now, again, we don't need to turn the rear wheel. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to open this up here. And I need to have all these fronts be converted to rear. So the, the fast way to do it is just modify, uh, search and replace names, look for the word front and replace it with the word rear and hit replace and it's going to do that we need to get rid of the turn joint so what i could actually do is get my uh auto spin joint here and well actually no what i can do is just get rid of just select the manual spin joint shift p to unparent it and then delete the turn joint okay so very simple there we don't need to turn the, the rear wheels so that'll work just fine okay so uh, that's what we're going to do there then we need a, a center joint for the wheels and we're not going to use the existing suspension joints those are separate so what I'm going to do is basically I'm going to take a just take this and duplicate it control D and I can sort of slide this back I'm only moving on this x-axis so if I open this up here, I can simply delete the child joint of this so that we're left with a single joint here. And all I need to then do is come in a channel box. And on the x-axis, if I zero this out, it's going to be perfectly centered. And we'll call this uh, rear axle joint or something like that. So rear axle, how do you spell axle? Axle GNT. Okay. And we can do the same on the front here. Select this, Control D, open this up, delete everything below that main joint, select that new joint there, X value, set it to zero, and that should center that, and call this front axle joint. Okay, so <clears throat> and then what we can do is parent the turn joint the front turn joint to the underneath the front axle joint so just middle mouse drag that on there so now we have that and same thing here the left rear manual spin joint is going to be parented under the rear axle joint right there and now this is all connected like that obviously we need the other side here so let's do the same thing select the rear uh, manual spin joint here go to skeleton go to mirror joints now it's it should um there we go. Make sure it's set to, I think it's behavior. And let's go ahead and mirror this so we can hit apply. So it's going to mirror that over. And let's do the same for the front turn joint. Hit mirror. And now those are mirrored over. You can see that our axle is, is uh, set correctly. Um, now, I just want to make sure here because I may have done this backward. I want to make sure that if I, say, put a, a 90 degree rotation it'll go so positive 90 go rotates to the front let's see if positive 90 
here also rotates to the front. So I think we should be fine. Uh, if not, we can always fix it later. Because I can't ex I can't remember 100% right now. But we'll fix it later if we do get it wrong. So now we have this axle joint that is the parent for both those. And the same in the front. These And these are separate from the, the uh, car rig joints that exist already. Okay, so that's what we got going on there. And wheel controls. So we need some kind of control to be able to run the wheels. So, uh, well, let's start by doing this here. So let's let's bind our wheels. So the wheels, uh, there we go, left front tire. Now, if you open up the left front tire, you'll see that we have a high poly tire here. So if I shift H, the high poly tire, then I'm going to hit control one just to show it by itself. You'll see that it's an actual tire with, with actual treads and detail. So what, I, the, what I'm setting up here is the ability to switch back and forth between the low resolution tire and this high polygon tire here. Okay. Um, but we're going to skin everything right now. And then we could have a switch to turn one off. One. So if you want to do a close up of the car pulling up to the camera, you would, you would want to turn on the high poly wheel, not this uh, low resolution simple one. Okay. So I'm just going to hide this high poly tire. Uh, but just be aware that that's there. I'm going to select the entire group because I want to skin everything in this group to the auto spin joint. So shift click the auto spin. That's the last one in the chain. Okay. And then we can do a skin. And because we used it at, its, at the settings we liked, I'm just going to go skin it directly. And to check, we can just select this joint and rotate it. And you see the tire rotates. Let's do the same for the right front tire. Shift select that auto spin joint skin bind skin and let's do the left rear tire shift select the auto spin joint you just hit g and it should skin it and the right rear shift select that joint hit g and that should skin that so all these joints now are going to rotate the tires okay so I'm going to take this joint chain and this joint chain, and I'm going to parent them under. So I'm going to open up move control here. I'm going to put these under the move control. So middle mouse drag them under the move control. And now when I move the car, you'll see that my wheels also move. Um, now these, these guys right here, what we can do, um, these we can just, you know, again, this is obviously not, very accurate as far as what's going on under this car and that's fine um, what I'm going to do is simply select this piece of geometry and I'm going to shift select this joint and this joint and I also want that center axle joint or uh, you know what maybe not Let, let's leave out the center axle joint and just skin so let's bind skin there so basically once we have our controls set up these are going to be moving and this is this is kind of ugly here but again not not super realistic um, if you want you can add that center joint maybe it'll hold that center section better doesn't really matter um, then we're gonna select this uh, shift select that joint uh, well no let's uh, shift select I guess it doesn't really matter um, and this one and skin bind skin we'll see if that does it, if that ends up looking horrible um, then we'll do something about it. But for right now, I'm, I'm okay with it. All right, so I'm going to do that for right now. And now we need to make a control for each of the wheels. So let's go ahead again. Uh, I'll start with a circle here. And, you know, it just depends on how, you know, interesting you want to make your controls. Um, I'm just going to maybe turn up uh, sections here to, I don't know, 16 or something like that. And then go to Control Vertex. Actually, you know what? Let's do more than 16. Let's do, let's do 32. Just so that we have a lot of potential detail here. And I'm just going to select every other vertex. So skip one. What did I do here? There we go. So I'm just holding down shift and just dragging, skip a vertex and select the next one. And there, and we can just maybe scale just to give it some detail 
what you know again it doesn't matter you could leave it as a circle it really doesn't matter okay so let's rotate this 90 degrees i'm just holding down j and i rotate it till it snaps to 90 okay um and then i can just move this over and let's let's go ahead and hide our polygons so let's hold down v and just snap this to that joint and we can just move it out a little bit actually before we move it out let's uh let's duplicate it and hold down v and snap it to that joint okay so this is where we are here let's bring back our polygons and we want this control to be sort of out here somewhere and let's scale them down so they're not so huge you know something like that okay so just like that and while we have them both selected control G to group them control D to duplicate that group and then set scale X to minus one on that group so it'll flip them over then we're gonna select all these open up the groups select the controls hit shift P to unparent them and delete the groups okay so this is our left front control so left front CTRL left rear control right rear control and right front control okay let's select all four of these guys and just make sure we, we uh, always remember to do this freeze transformations just to zero them out okay and what these controls are going to be doing is they're going to we can be able to grab this control move it up and down to raise each wheel independently of all the other ones um, so we need to move the pivots and again I'm just gonna hide these so we need the pivots to be at the turning joints for the front so hold on D and V and snap right so when we're moving the pivot you hold down D and V not just V because we're not trying to move the control we're trying to move its pivot so D and V and snap that pivot there just middle mouse drag till it snaps to that okay and the rear you, you could do the same thing it's not quite as important because nothing is turning here so we could just snap them there and that should be good okay so that's that's what we have now so we need to constrain the turning joints to the controls here on the y-axis because again the y-axis is the one that's going to turn the wheel so what I need to do is select the control first shift select that turning joint make sure it's the turning joint and then constrain and we want to do a point constraint so let's come over here to point we're going to reset the settings okay but and then only do the Y and hit apply so it's going to as a point constraint now when I grab the controller move it up and now you can see it moves the wheel up and now okay that's just translate that's the uh, because the point constraint it happens on the translate Y same thing here so select this shift select the turning joint and hit apply again here and there we go and same thing here here what is I'm going to shift select the manual spin joint and do a constraint point again and you see it only happened on the translate Y same thing here hit G and again so now all of these are constrained on the Y axis to bring it up and down there we go okay uh, so that's that's the way we're going to have the wheels be independent in their raising and lowering and we need to put these controls under the move control so grab the, all four of these and put them middle mouse drag them to the move control so they become children of the move control so again this allows them to move with the car okay now if you want to set limits so attribute editor limits on on how high or low you want this these things to be able to move so obviously if i go back and forth nothing happens if i go side to side nothing happens so it's only working on the y so let's bring back our 
car here. So if you want to, and since I hid the main body, just bring that back. If you want to put a limit on how high this wheel can go, obviously you don't want it to do that. So you can put limits on there, uh, just like we did before using translate. I'm not going to do it here, but feel free to add that functionality if you so desire. Okay, so you can you can do that. So on this control, on well, we can select all four of these controls. So let's grab these. Okay, let's go in the channel box. Um, we want to lock and hide everything except translate Y and also rotate Y. Okay, so translate Y and rotate Y, we're going to leave, so lock and hide selected. Okay, because we're going to be able to, to uh, rotate things on the Y axis as well. Um, so with the, with the four controls selected, I still have all four of them selected. I'm going to go to modify, I'm going to go to add attribute. And I'm going to make a new attribute here called spin RPM. Okay, so this is for the uh, manual rotation of the wheel. We're going to set an RPM value, which will have the wheel then just spin at that rate constantly until we change the value. So that, that's a nice feature to have rather than because if you want a car to be driving along a road at a certain speed, the wheels are going to be spinning at a certain speed. And if you're just simply keying the rotation value of that wheel, trying to get it to stay at a certain speed um, becomes a little tricky. But if you have an RPM value, you want to tell it, I want you to rotate at 1,000 RPM, the wheel's just going to rotate at 1,000 RPM, RPM uh, constantly. And then you can keyframe that value up and down depending on what you're trying to do. This is very useful for things like propellers as well, like a, a propeller on a plane. If, uh, you know, when the plane is just sort of idling, it's at a slower RPM, so you can have that at a lower RPM. And then as a pilot is getting ready to take off, they will increase the RPMs of the propeller, so you can just key up that value as needed. So I find that a very useful way to do spinning things like, uh, you know, again, helicopter rotors, same deal. So we're going to call this spin RPM. And this is a float value, okay? Um, and that's that's all I'm going to set there. Default is zero. Hit OK. So now we have a spin RPM value. I'm not going to set a minimum or a maximum. Um, so that's fine as is. So then uh, what we're going to do is use a formula to determine how to set the RPMs for that wheel. So this is our formula right here. Um, we want to get a very specific uh, rate of revolutions per minute, or, or RPMs. Um, that way we can just have, like I said, we can just have it stay at that speed and then increase or decrease as needed. So right now I'm running my at a 24 fr uh, frames per second. So this is the default frame rate. If you're doing this at 30 frames per second, then just substitute 30 into the formula and you'll get a different number but that that'll make it correct if you if you're running at 30 but use this formula you're not going to get the, the the exact rpm that you want so at 24 frames per second times 60 seconds that means in a minute um you're, you're running at a rate about 1440 frames per minute so one rpm is 360 degrees per 1440 frames right revolutions per minute that's why we did this time 60 because 60 seconds in a minute so one rpm is 360 degrees per 1440 frames. so if you want your wheel to run at one rpm um it's going to do one complete revolution in 1440 frames so therefore if you want to do x rpms you want to say 360 times x so if you want 500 rpms it's 360 times 500 over 1440 so you're just taking you're just taking what you get for for this rpm value and multiplying it by the number of rpms that you want so this is this is the formula that will use to 
rotate the wheels okay so if we come back here we're going to use an expression okay and, and you know so far we've been using nodes so in the node editor we've been using nodes to do stuff and nodes are very useful nodes are very fast uh they're they're maya's architecture is built on nodes so uh, you know they're they're very quick and th they happen real time because everything's just connected so anytime you change a value in something else anything is connected to will will update um in this case though we want this to evaluate every frame so we're going to use an expression okay so let's go ahead and go to windows animation editors and we're looking for the expression editor okay so I'm going to go here, select filter, and set it to my expression name. And I'm going to make a new expression here. So what I'm going to call this is, I want to start with the left front wheel. So left front, uh, e, uh, what am I, EXPR for expression. Okay, so what I'm going to do now, I've named it. So what I can do is start to type in the actual expression in here. So this is where the actual uh, code will go. Um, for this expression okay so expressions are just little chunks of code that you write uh they're written in mail script which is maya's version well, maya's native programming language which is a very watered down version of c plus plus if you've done any kind of uh, programming so um mel is is the name of it my embedded language i believe that stands for so what we got to do is first declare a couple of variables here so variables are values that can be changed in the in the in the code on the fly as you need to. So we want to make float values. So float values are just like decimal values. They have a decimal point versus like things like integer values, which are whole numbers. So an integer like 12 is an integer. 12.5 is a float. OK, so anything with a decimal value, um, you want to use float because if you plug a 12.5 into an integer value, it's going to remove the decimal and, and set it to 12 exactly. So uh, you'll lose some, some accuracy there. So float value, uh, dollar sign RPM. Now the dollar sign, when you name a variable, that's just part of, of Mel script. That's how Mel knows that it's a, a custom attribute is be, by putting a dollar sign in front of it. <coughs> because otherwise Mel thinks it's a reserved a variable that is a system variable so if you're making your own variables you need to put a dollar sign in front of them. it's just one of those quirks so equal so as we declare this this va this uh, variable here we can reference our spin rpm value this attribute right here so because we the way we wrote it we wrote it with a lowercase s and then a capital RPM, we need to reference it that way when we first created it, even though it doesn't look like that in here. So we're going to do left front control. So left front uh, CTRL. Okay, so it, all the names need to match perfectly, otherwise this won't work. So, and then if we want to access that particular attribute, we can, we can call it, uh, we can access it like spin dot rtm so you put a dot and then the name of the attribute you want to reference so if i wanted to do translate y i would have said left front control dot translate y okay but because i want spin rpm it's dot spin rpm and semicolon so the semicolon tells maya that that's that you've ended that command and again if you've done any c plus plus you that's the same there so all i've said there is make this new variable called rpm and take whatever value is in the left front control spin RPM attribute and plug it into that RPM value. Right now it's zero, so this would, on, on, you know, initially, this would be a zero because that's what's in here. If I had to put a 500 in here, that would assign 500 into that RPM value. Okay, then another attribute, float. So another float attribute, dollar sign, DEG. For degrees, we're going to use this to calculate how many degrees uh, to rotate per frame. Okay, so DEG, and again, we're going to assign something to it right off the bat here, and we're going to do that formula. So we're going to do parentheses, we're going to do double parentheses here, 360 times, okay, and times just the, the asterisk, 
times the RPM value. So whatever RPM value we got in there, we're going to, oh, not PRM, but RPM. And yeah, you got to be careful with making sure everything is spelled correctly because you can run into some problems. So I'm going to close off this parentheses here. So this one here matches this one. Then I'm going to divide that by 1440 because like we saw earlier at 24 frames per second for a minute, you're going at a, at a, a rate of 1440 frames per minute. And then we can close off that parenthesis and semicolon to end it so it's going to run that uh, value and then it's going to run this calculation and then put that the result inside of the degree of value here so that's what it's going to tell you um, to rotate in there okay so this is what we have here that's going to be put in there right now it's a value of zero so 360 times zero uh, is 0 over divided by 1440, which is 0, right? So this is right now, that's to be a 0 because this is set to 0. This will only have something in it if it's set to something greater than 0. Or even uh, smaller, lower than 0. So a negative value can be put in here, and it, the wheels are just going to spin backward because it's negative. Okay. So then what we want to do, I'm going to go a couple lines down here. Um, we're going to access the, and by the way, this uh, expression editor has, has a bad habit of if you click on something while this code is in here, while we, because we haven't hit the create button to store this little bit of code. So if you, if you, if you click on something, it's going to deselect everything and you lose your code. So what I like to do from time to time is just select all of this and control C so I can just copy it to the clipboard in case I do lose it then I can always just paste it back in here. So we're going to go left front manual spin joint. Okay, and again, make sure you get the names correct, otherwise this, it won't work. Dot rotate X. So we have that manual spin joint, right? And we're, we're going to access the X rotation because that's the spinning axis. And we're going to say equals, and we're going to just copy this and paste it here. So equals whatever's already in that same value. And we're going to add, so plus, whatever the degree value is. So DEG. So whatever, whatever came out of this calculation is going to be added to what's already in that rotate X value. So we're not going to overwrite the value with something new. We're going to add to that value. Okay, so that's why we use this. We're going to say into this value take what's already in there which is this and add the degrees to it and then assign it back to this thing so it's just going to update that value okay then semicolon to end that and then we're going to use what's called an if statement uh, we're going to do some comparing to check something so and the reason that i do this this part here you don't necessarily have to do but i do that so that i can reset my wheels back to zero otherwise the the rotation values in those wheels just start to climb and climb and climb until you have like ridiculous numbers in there. So if space, open parentheses, frame, and then we're going to put two equals, one. So what this means that frame is whatever the current frame is. This is just, you notice that there's no dollar sign here because this is a, a system variable here. So all this is going to give you is whatever frame you're on in the timeline. So if frame equals 1, i.e. if we're back on frame 1, so right now frame is equal to 1, then we need to tell it what to do. So what I'm going to do is just open these curly braces here, and what I like to do is just immediately go down a couple lines and then close them. That way I know I got them open and closed. Anytime you use things like parentheses and curly braces, you want to make sure that you you have ma they they any any time you open one make sure that you close it too so i'm going to come back to this line here i'm going to hit a tab i'm going to hit tab just to go in to indent a little bit just for clarity so l underscore actually you don't we don't have to rewrite this we just copy this value and plug it in here and then we're going to say equals 0 semicolon so if we're back on frame one, we're just going to zero out the value that's in this rotate X of that manual spin joint. Because like I said, 
you, you run this a few times, it's just going to keep adding a value. It's going to keep adding a value to that to what's in there. And eventually, you because you're going to do a lot of testing and what have you, eventually this value is going to be in the billions and trillions. Um, so it's just not going to be very clean. So I like to, anytime I hit this thing to, to tell it to go back to frame one, um, then I like to just zero out that value just so that we clean out all that really, those really high numbers. Okay, that's just the thing that I like to do. Okay, so I'm going to just select all this, Control-C, just to copy it to the clipboard. And we can hit the Create button. And if there's no errors, it'll, it'll work. If there's an error, then you'll get the, it'll be red in here, and it'll tell you why it couldn't create that expression. And then notice that it, that expression showed up here. Now, uh, one thing I should probably explain here is notice that we have two equal signs here and only one here. So anytime when you're writing code that you are trying to compare two values. So you're checking frame one to see if it's equal to the value one. So this is a comparison. And anytime you're comparing anything, use double equal signs. Because if I use a single equals here, basically that single equals is used for assigning values. Just like here, I assigned values in here, I assigned values in here. So if I had done this, what that's going to do is it's not going to compare. It's going to take frame and make it one. It's going to assign one to frame. So it's just going to automatically shift you to frame one. That's not what you want. So you want to compare them without doing an assignment. Okay, so that is the difference there. Here, we want the single one because we want to set this value to zero. We're doing an assignment. So, excuse me, that's why we're, we have a single, um, a single equal sign there. Okay, so that is our left front expression. So again, I'm just going to copy this. I'm going to hit the new expression. So this is left rear EXPR, well, capitals. Okay, and I'm just going to paste this expression here so I don't have to do it all over again. So where it says front, I want to be rear. So let's just, anywhere you see the word front, replace it with the word rear. Okay. Make sure you get all of them, otherwise you're going to run the issues. Okay, rear, 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 and rear. And this is the left rear expression, so hit create. Okay, and let's go ahead and make another new expression. We'll call this right front EXPR. And paste that in here, and then, so, anywhere you see the word, the, the L underscore, you just want to replace it with an R. So there, okay, and you got to make sure you get them all, otherwise it's going gonna, it's, it's gonna to start to change the wrong things and, and give you all kinds of problems. So let's make sure right, 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 and right, hit create, and I'm just going to copy this rear one in here, so copy, new expression, right, rear, EXPR, so plug this in here. And put an R anywhere you see the left, the L underscore. You want to put the right. I think that's all of them. So create. So there's our four expressions for all four wheels. So I'm just going to move this over here for right now. I can just minimize it, I guess. Um, so let's see what we got. So if I come here to my timeline, I'm just going to set this to a thousand frames. And I'm going to test the rotation. Now, it's very hard for me to see if this is rotating or not because it's just, you know, there's no, um, it's just a very s simple sort of color coloring going on here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go into face mode and double click some faces here. I want to select, okay. And I'm just going to right-click on them. I'm going to assign, uh, where is my car paint? I'm just going to assign the car paint to the wheels because that way I can see them rotating. When they're like this, it's hard to tell if they're rotating. So let's, I'm just going to go ahead. I'm just You, you click on uh, one and then shift, double-click the next one. So let's do that here. That way I can really see.
whether or not I am actually spinning correctly. Okay, so that that just it's gonna make your life a lot easier to be able to see. They're like spokes that you could actually see. So let's go ahead and oops. And then this. So I'm just gonna assign that car paint material there. Okay, so uh, that's just something that's gonna be allow me to be able to see this. So if I right now if I select one of these, my spin RPM is set to zero. So if I hit play, there should be no spinning. Right? I've told it to be zero. Okay, so that works. Let's do I'm gonna select all four of these controls, just let's test them all at once. Let's put a value of 10 in here. So I wanted to spin at about 10 RPM. So I'm going to go back to frame one. And OK, so that is 10 RPM. It's just going to spin at that speed for as long as this value stays at 10. And just, all I did was hit play here. Notice I didn't set any keyframes or anything. I just hit play and the expression is going to run because remember, every time it checks the frame number, um, so it just rotates it just adds a value to the rotation of that uh, manual spin joint there so and notice that when i set it to zero the wheels reset themselves because i had that little bit of code there to do that so let's set this to so let's go back here let's set this to 100 now they should spin quite a bit faster so play and you can see that we're getting much faster spinning okay so that's working so we can save our file here and that's working very well. Now that I've tested that, I'm going to set these back to zero. Don't don't leave values in there. Always reset it back to zero. Okay, so there we go. So that works. So that's that's all good there. So we have we can do sort of this suspension bounce here, and then we could also spin the wheels with our manual spin control. Okay. Um, now we want to be able to actually turn the wheels. So let's let's make a control for that. And I'm just I'm gonna let's go in the top view. It's always easier to see. So I'm gonna just move this thing out of the way here, this box here. So let's get our EP curve tool again. And I'm gonna hold down X for grid snapping. So let's I'm, I'm gonna do another arrow control. So I'm going to maybe three grid squares that way. And let's go like this. Notice that I'm, I'm actually putting divisions here, not just going straight across. Uh, and I'll show you why in a second here. So continue to hold down X, two, three, here, 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 there, there, and there. Okay, so that's what we have here. And this one, again, has, much, has many more control vertices in it because I'm going to bend it. That's right. I need, I need to bend it. So now that I have it, I might actually... Well, let's go ahead and center the pivot first. And let's scale it down just a little bit so it's not so big. Maybe something like that. Okay. Um, and I'm just going to duplicate it so that because I'm going to need one for the back as well. So I'm just going to duplicate that one. And um, let's go ahead and rotate it. Hold down J and rotate it 90 degrees this way. Okay. And I'm going to use a bend deformer because I want to just give it a curve. So let's go to deform and let's look for nonlinear. Where'd you go? Uh, there it is. Nonlinear and do a bend. Okay, now this needs to be a line. You see how it's sort of perpendicular to my control? So I'm going to hold down J and I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees this way. Then I'm going to come over here and increase my curvature until I see which way it's bending. And if that's correct, and that looks about right. I'm just going to probably bend it about that much. Okay, so this is why we needed all those extra control vertices, because if we didn't have them, it wouldn't bend. So that looks that looks fine to me. And then I can simply go to Edit, um, Delete by Type History. And when I do that, that deformer goes away and then now bakes in that bend. Okay, so save my file here. All right, so I'm going to raise this up. Here, this is going to be the control that I use to actually turn the car. 
Okay, so maybe put this some, somewhere like this. Okay, so uh, there we go. And what I'm going to do is just hide my polygons, hold down D and V, and snap my pivot point to that front axle. Okay, so now the control actually pivots around that axle, which is good. And let's go ahead and freeze. So modify freeze transformations. And we're going to call this one turn control. So turn oh, control. So that, that's what we're using to turn the car or to turn the wheels. So Windows, Node Editor. And we'll go ahead and just put it in the same tab as the uh, master control. So we're going to load up by turn control. There it is. And what we need to is bring in the turning joints. So that is the left front turning joint. This shift select the right front turning joint and load those in there. And again, we need to select this and select this and hit P just to pin these because they keep moving around again. You see that on this tab, I, it had, you see how it turns itself off. So you got you to be careful with that. Um, so let's go in here and so we have these these two joints right here and then the turn control itself okay um so what i need to do here is hook up the rotate y value of the turn control into the rotate y value of let me enlarge this um the rotate y value of the turn control needs to go to the rotate y value of both of these joints so rotate Y to rotate Y and rotate Y here to rotate Y. So let's see. Let's see what we get. So if I grab this turn control and turn it, you can see what we're getting here. So this is obviously, this one is working okay. This one is backward. Okay, so we obviously need to do something uh, about that. So I think what I, what I did when I mirrored them across is I... Um, I had the wrong thing so we can go we can go ahead and um, and fix that let me see what we got we can do right here so there's different ways you can fix this you can you can undo what we did here and go back and and uh, set your mirror options where's mirror it's under skeleton mirror joints you can set this to orientation so I totally forgot that it was supposed to be orientation no big deal show you how to how to fix this real quick without having to you to go back if you want you can just go back and, and redo it the other thing you can do is just um when you rotate here so th negative 33 we have a negative 33 so we just need to invert this value so we could do it like we did before so this is for on the right side the right side is the one that is backwards so it's it's this right front uh, right front turn joint here so what we could do again just use hit tab so multiply divide okay and we're going to open input one we're going to get this rotate y plug it into input one get the output y oh, i'm sorry output x so input one x output x goes to rotate y and of course we have these annoying conversion nodes here let's let's make a little bit of room here and bring in our conversion node right here. I'm going to hit one to collapse it. And then we can come in. So if you double click this, set our input two X value to minus one. And now you'll see that it just inverted that. Okay. So that's what the wheels are doing. Um, if we, let's zero this guy out here. And let's let's uh, bring back our geometry so we can actually see it better. So if I take this and rotate it this way, uh, oh, did I not skin my? I thought I did skin. Oh, looks like we might have lost our skinning here. No big deal. Um, let's go ahead. Not sure why we lost our skinning, but that's all right. Uh, let let's just go back and, and reskin. So left front tire, and we want. I might have hit undo or something earlier. We want the the auto spin joint here and we're going to do a skin bind skin that should work let's just check to make sure so if we rotate this 
There we go. Now wheels rotating. Yeah, I'm not sure how I lost my skidding there. Who knows? Um, so right front, shift select the right auto spin, skin by the skin. There we go. And did we lose the skidding here as well? Looks like we might. Yeah, we did. Uh, so le uh, right rear tire, shift select to that auto spin joint and bind skin. And then uh, right rear, uh, left rear tire, shift select the left rear auto spin joint and bind that skin. Okay, not sure what that was all about, but easy fix. So I'm going to select this turn control here. And let's rotate it. You can see that that wheel rotates perfectly. And same with this wheel here. Okay, so we fixed that pretty easily. Okay, so the other thing you're going to notice is that our controls sort of stay where they are. They don't really rotate with the wheels. So just as a personal preference thing, I like to have them rotate with the wheels. So let's go ahead. So now that these are connected, I'm going to get rid of... So some of the, I got some nodes here that... that uh, that came in here and I'm just going to remove them from my graph because I don't need them and oh yeah it looks like I had another conversion node in here so just collapse that okay conversion nodes are just part of life in node no in the node editor so now that I have these connected I, if I hit uh, well I can hit one just to really collapse them or I can hit two to sort of halfway collapse them okay so it just depends on how you want to do that um, well, you're not even looking at them. Sorry. Uh, these nodes right here. If I hit uh, one, it collapses it completely. If I hit two, it shows part of the node. And if I hit three, then that's the full node here. And if I hit, uh, sometimes if I hit four, I'll get a something. But this this uh, this time. So I'm just going to hit, uh, let's just hit one because everything's connected. I don't really need to see anything else there. So I'm just going to move these here. Then I can bring in my actual controls here. So I'm going to take just the front ones, the two front ones. Okay. And let's add those in. And they get put over there. And they're right on top of each other. So we can uh, do this. So let's open the rotate Y on both of these. Let me enlarge this. Okay. So rotate Y to rotate Y. Rotate Y to rotate Y on these. Let's see what that does with the controls if we need to. So they see the control. This control now here, this guy is now rotating with the wheel. And it looks like we're good here as well. Okay. So there we go. So now those controls are moving along with the wheel like we want. Okay, so now we can take our turn control and parent it under the move control. So that, again, will now move with the car. You see, every time we make a control, and it looks like my car got unbound again. You know, I'm not really sure why everything got unparented. But, again, no big deal. Just take the main body group, and we're going to select the main body joint. And we're going to do a skin, a bind skin. Just give it a sec. Weirdness is happening here, so... We will just, so it's going to go through because there's a lot of different uh, parts to that. Let's give it a minute and hope that we're not crashing. Nope, we're not good. So let's just see that again. Not sure why everything seems to be. So those got de-skinned as well. So I, I might have, I must have deleted history on something and lost. But as you can see, I need to reskin these guys, but these are not important. Um, there we go. So now everything is where is moving along with the move control and... I can turn my wheels just like that, and I can also move these up and down like that. Okay, these guys here again, I can just skin this to the main body joint and just skin it 100% there. And for these, these things here, I can skin it to that and that. And I can even do that middle, that middle joint as well. Let's do a bind skin. Okay, so we're getting that again, not realistic at all, but good enough for what this car is made, meant for. So select this joint and this joint and the middle one and that geometry and skin bind skin. And let's just check. 
Yep. Okay. Good enough. All right, so wheel controls. Now that we've, if I select, got to make sure I select all four of these guys. And actually, I didn't even need to have those out for the, the rear wheels. But I can right-click and lock and hide uh, all the rotate y, uh, attributes because these are being controlled by this control here. So I don't need those to be visible. And then the turn control itself, I don't need anything but rotate Y, so I'm going to lock and hide everything else. So now all it has is rotate Y. I can't rotate it side to side or anything like that. So let's uh, go ahead and save. All right, so that's great for turning. What if we want to, you know, fishtail the car, have the, the, uh, the back end sort of slip, do skids and things like that? Well, we can make a control for that. I'm just going to take this control here, move it to the back. I'm going to maybe make this one bigger. Okay, again, I'm going to just raise it up so it's not on the floor. And I'm going to bend this one again, but I'm going to bend it uh, while it's flat this way. So let's go to Deform, Nonlinear, Bend. And let's take this, hold down J, and rotate it flat. Add some curvature. Now, I don't want it going up and down like that. I want it, so I want to rotate this, <coughs> hold down J, and rotate this 90 degrees this way because I want to rotate it that way. <coughs> Okay, so uh, there we go. Now we can, uh, you know, you can decide how much of a bend you want. Um, I don't know, it's probably good enough. And I'm going to delete history, and that'll save that. Now, you know, because I only had one vertex here, what I can do is just, or I can do turn on symmetry here. So symmetry object X, I think it is. Yep. So I can just straighten these out if they're annoying, which they kind of are. So that control is going to affect this, the side to side of the back wheels. Um, we'll call this one skid control. Okay, let's go ahead and uh, freeze transformations on it. Modify freeze transformations. Okay, and we're going to snap the pivot of this guy to that front axle. So let's go ahead and hide the polygons. Get our move tool, hold down D and V, and just snap that over here. So this is going to pivot from here, right? The other one, the, the move control pivots from the back, and that rotates the car from the back. Okay, but this one, because we want to pivot around the front wheels to rotate to skid the back of the car, uh, we're going to do that, put the pivot up here at the, the front axle. Okay, so we're going to put this under middle mouse drag and under move control. Okay, so that skid control is under move control. And all the things that were already under move control, besides skid control, I'm going to just grab those and move them under skid control. So... Uh, now we have move control, then skid control. So all that's going to do now is the skid control is going to rotate the car from that. So uh, let's bring back our polygon so we can see this better. So if we rotate the skid control, you can see I can skid the back of the car. And then the move control does it the other way. Okay, so that's all that is. It's a very simple setup. Uh, it's just all we're changing is the pivot point of rotation. When you're skidding, the pivot point's up here in the front. When you're just turning normally, the pivot point is up here. It is back here in the uh, in the back. Okay. So on the skid control, uh, all I need is rotate Y. So I'm going to lock and hide all of this. So lock and hide selected on. Oh wait, that was the wrong one. Sorry. Make sure you do the skid control, not the move control. So. Skid control, lock and hide everything, except rotate Y. Okay, so we're in business there. All right, so, you know, this is coming along pretty well. Um, we can skid the car. We can rotate the wheels. You know, we have our suspension. 
working and ah okay so again um when i reskin the body I, I i skinned it to the wrong thing here so all i gotta do uh and you know this i'm gonna leave this in here i could i could have you know edit all this out but i'm not i'm gonna leave it in here because this this does happen in the process of rigging things go wrong oh i mess up because you know um i mess up things sometimes um so it's pretty normal for things to get all screwy so all you got to do is kind of understand where what uh, went wrong there and then uh you know try to fix it um or you can just redo stuff. I, I try where I can to just fix it. So all this stuff is now, all this stuff in the main body group has now been skinned uh, to the main body joint when it should have been skinned to the rear axle joint. So I'm just going to go through and select all these pieces of geometry in here. And there's quite a few. So annoying, yes, but it is what it is. It's not that bad. Uh, and unfortunately because when i skinned it i could select the, the top group and just skin that and it automatically did that but i can't unskin the top group i have to actually select the pieces of geometry themselves so this is what i'm doing here and i'm just gonna there's a lot of stuff in this car we want the hood, we want the trunk, okay, so we don't want the interior. So now I've got all that selected, I'm going to go to skin, and I'm going to go to unbind skin, and it's going to it's gonna go through all of these, and then now they're unbound, and with them still selected, I can then come into my joints here and select my rear suspension joint, and do a skin, bind skin. Okay, uh, oh, not yet. There we go. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, that's just part of the game here. There we go. And again, of course, my doors also got unskinned. Um, so, again, let's uh, close the main body group here. And where did I put my doors? Here they are. Uh, no, that's the controls. So, here, let's just select this. Oh, they're in the main body group here. Um, Oh, did I skin my doors? So let's close down here. Let's easy way to close things down. Just hold on shift to close them. So there we go. Uh, where are my doors? In the interior. Oh, you know what? I, I totally did not skin the interior. So I'm going to leave the doors. Let's uh, open up this interior group here and just get all this, the seats and stuff because they need to be. Because right now I don't believe they are. Yeah, they're not skinned. So let's get the seats. Again, if you if you didn't have this problem, then this is nothing you need to worry about. Um, I'm actually going to leave out the steering wheel because we're going to skin that separately here in a sec. But if you have it skinned, don't worry about it. We can always just unskin it later. So, uh, and rear view mirror. There we go. Okay, so all that needs to be skinned to the rear suspension joint skin by skin and if they're already skinned to a skin cluster just go to skin and unbind skin and then skin bind skin okay so again things happen who knows why so my seats and everything are moving my steering wheel is not because i'm going to do that here separately uh, so let's get our doors now. Uh, let's see, where's my doors? So I'm going to close the interior. So right rear door, I'm going to shift select my joint, skin, bind skin. So what is already connected? So if stuff's already connected, again, you're going to have to go in here and unskin, which is tremendously annoying. Let's just open all the doors and just get them all unskinned. Okay. Here we go. So I'm just going to skin on by... Oh, that was not what I wanted to do. 
unbind skin. So now that's unbound. Okay, so now I can do them by group, so I don't need to select individual pieces of geometry anymore. So right rear door, shift select the right rear joint, skin, bind skin. And let's just check that. There we go. We're back in business. Okay, so right front door, right front joint, do a bind skin. And left rear door, shift select the left rear joint, skin, bind skin. And left front door, left front joint, skin, bind skin. Okay, so there we go. That, let's just select all four of them and make sure that they all work before we go on. Yeah. Okay, so again, that's the reality of uh, rigging, of anything in Maya, really. S things that you thought you had done, and, and I knew I had done them, but at some point I must have deleted history on them or something, and they got unbound, and then I bound them to the wrong thing. So mistakes are made. Easy. Uh, just learn how to fix them. Okay, just... So everything looks like it's it's back as it should be. So I'm just going to go ahead and save the file here um, to make sure that uh, that's all good to go. Okay, so the steering wheel. This is our turning joint here. So what we want is when we turn the wheels, and notice you can, oh, by the way, if you want to put a limit on the wheels, you probably should because obviously you're never going to turn the wheels this far. So let's go ahead and just do that now. Uh, let's go to Attribute Editor go to the transform node we want rotate and we're rotating in Y so let's turn on the well let, no let's let's see how far we want to be able to rotate these wheels so that's about 43.57 so let's say 45 degrees which is a which is the default here so if we turn this on we can go to 45 and then it won't let you go any further you probably never go that far but giving it a little bit extra is good so that is our limits set so save that. Okay, so now the steering wheel. We want, when we rotate this, we want the steering wheel to rotate accordingly. Um, the other way you could have set up the rotation of the wheels, instead of having this turn control, you could have had some kind of curve attached to the steering wheel. That if you rotate that curve, it'll rotate the wheels. But the reason that I prefer this way is that if that curve is inside the car, then you know it might be tough to sort of get in the car to be able to get it, to grab it. Uh, I suppose you could make it really big where it's outside of the car, but either way. Um, so what we need to do, I'm going to go ahead and let's go find the steering wheel in our thing here. So it's in the interior. So let's close up our exterior and let's open up interior. We don't want the seats. Here's our steering wheel group right here. Let's control, uh, control one in here. So there is our steering wheel group. So what I want to do here is have a, a joint chain that runs the length of this steering column. So let's go to Skeleton, Create Joints, and I'm going to turn on my wireframe on joints right here. So hold down V to snap a joint right there, and then come around here, hold down V to snap another joint there, and hit Enter to complete that. So what that's done is it's aligned that joint chain along the length of this steering wheel column. Okay, going from the bottom to the top. So it's aiming up at the top. Um, so this one, this bottom one here is a steering base joint. And then... This one here is steering and joint. Okay, so if your steering wheel is already bound to something else, which as you can see mine is, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to select all that geometry in the steering wheel and go to skin, unbind skin, and then I'm going to um, bind it to the base joint, the steering base joint, so skin, bind skin. Okay, and what that's going to do is now if I rotate this, you can see that my steering wheel is rotating. Now, it's not exactly perfectly centered as far as uh, the way that I model this. So, 
you know, it is what it is. Uh, but it should be fine. Okay, so there we go. So now when I rotate this, the whole steering wheel rotates. Um, so all I need to do now is parent this under the main body joints. Let me, let's close down geometry here. So middle mouse drag, steering base joints to main body joint. So let's hit control one to get out of this mode here. So if we select main body joint, this is what the steering wheel joint is now looking like. Okay, so now that should all be part of that. And there we go. Um, you know, actually, let me see here. If I move this, see my steering wheel is not moving. So this is this is actually wrong here. This should be parented under the uh, for, uh, rear suspension joint. So middle mouse drag, steering base joint under rear suspension joint. Now, and make sure that, yeah, here we go. So there we go. Now my steering wheel is moving with the car. So that's... That's what it should be. So that, yeah, that didn't seem right to me, but now, now I figured it out. So now what we got to do is make it so that when we rotate this turn control, the steering wheel now rotates. And we're going to use set driven key for that. So get in your rigging shelf here. And this, this one here with the little chain link here, that's your set driven key. And this is what comes up here. So we're going to load the turn the turn control is our driver, so load driver with that selected. It's going to put it in here. And then we want to load the steering base joint as our driven, so load driven. And we're rotating around the x-axis here, so we want to rotate y here and rotate x here. Okay, with everything set to zero, we're just going to set a key here. So this is zero, and so this is also zero. The X rotation is also zero. And we're going to take our turn control and rotate it to its maximum limit, which is negative 45 this way. And we're going to take our steering base joint. And because we, we rotate it to the right, we're going to keep, we're going to rotate this about, I don't know, 720. So negative 720. And set a key there. So now if we bring this back, notice if we rotate this on Y, notice that that wheel is now rotating, but it won't do it this side. So this side we need to go to maximum again, then come back here and do a 720. Okay, so it doesn't just do one revolution. If you look at cars, you can actually rotate the steering wheel multiple times before you get to where the wheel won't go any further. So what that, what that factor is is entirely up to you. Uh, I did 720, which is what, two revolutions? Um, to go one to go all the way to one end it, it, from center it takes two revolutions to do that so uh, did I set this key so let's set that key there so here we go okay so there we go so and and that's entirely up to you if you want to be more precise with it you can look you can research cars and how many times you have to turn the wheel to get it all the way to to one side and then plug that in there uh, so feel free to play with those numbers. It's up to you. So I can now close this. That's done. So save. And there we go. So the auto wheel rotation, we're going to put that in there so that we don't have to uh, use the manual spin joint to do all the manual rotation that we set up before. We don't want to have to use that to simulate just the car moving and slowing down and speeding up. Because that, you know, getting the, that to, to look correct without the wheels slipping uh, can prove to be very difficult, right? So, uh, and cars, you know, cars, they speed up, they slow down, they come to a stop. It, to, to be able to keyframe that RPM just right so that those wheels look like they're actually rotating correctly and they're not slipping uh, like you'd see in like video games and stuff like that, that's going to be real hard with that manual rotation. So we're going to use an automatic rotation, so it doesn't matter how fast or how slow the car is moving, the wheels will spin accordingly, uh, as you would expect. Okay, so, um, and the way we're going to use, do that is we're going to use a little bit of vector math, so to determine, 
you know how much the wheel should spin and the the angle of travel and things like that um we're, we're gonna we're gonna do that to get this to work correctly okay so in order to be able to get to, to do this we're gonna have to set thing do a little bit of setup here so um and we're gonna have to do it per wheel here so we're gonna start with the left front wheel so just deselect everything to make sure you, you have nothing selected hit control g and we're going to name this null left oops left underscore front old position pos so left front old position the way you calculate how much a car's tire should rotate is you need to keep track of its previous position and then also be able to find its its current position and then you can calculate that distance between the two and from there you can calculate how much rotation had to happen in the wheel to travel that distance so having this old position null that is going to keep track of where the car was in the frame before so this is calculated every frame and the old position is where the car was in the previous frame the current position is where the car is in the current frame okay so that's the way that we're going to do this so I'm going to again hide my polygons here and let's our so by default anytime you make a, a group it pops up at the origin so what I'm going to do is hold down V and snap this joint to the uh, left front auto spin joint remember this is the turn joint this is the manual spin joint and this is the auto spin joint so you want to put this at the auto spin joint because we're doing these calculations based on the position of the auto spin joint if you put it at any one of these other ones you're not going to get a an accurate uh, calculation okay now that that's there do not freeze the transformations on this uh on this uh group here the front old position reason being that we're going to use vectors and vectors in maya are always calculated from the origin so now that we have values in here we can calculate a vector from uh, the origin here okay so there we go so that that's what we have there uh so yeah so in order to get a, the correct position of this thing it has to be calculated from the origin and so this is the offset value from the origin um and what we're going to do now now that we have it in the in the position that we want it uh, I'm going to take this null and parent it under that very top group of the car. Okay, so now it's, it's actually at the bottom of this, this group here. We don't want, we're not going to parent it under the, the master control or the move control because it's not supposed to move with the car. It's supposed to get left behind. Otherwise, if it moved with the car, then the location of it in the next frame would be the same as it was in the previous frame because it would just be moving with the car. So we wouldn't be able to tell, we wouldn't be able to differentiate that from the current position of the car. So it's got to be able to stay and hold the value for the, for the next frame when the calculation is done. All right, so um, basically what we're going to do is we're going to, when, when we're in the current frame, we're going to take that current frame value and put it into the old position right before we move to the next frame. So that when we go to the next frame, that old position is now what we're going to use to do the calculation. So it's going to get updated uh, every frame. So let's do the same. I'm going to I'm going to duplicate this and set this to right front old position. And this one we need to take and hold down V and snap it to that auto joint and then select both of these, duplicate them. And this is left rear. Oops. Left rear old position and right rear old position. So take your left rear and put it at the left rear, hold down V, auto joint, and right rear goes there. Okay, make sure that these are positioned like that uh, so that this works correctly. Okay, now we need to set up an attribute for our automatic spinning. So I'm going to select all four wheel controls. And I'm going to go to modify, add attribute. And we're going to call this auto spin. So, 
And, and notice how I write this. I use a lowercase a for the first word and then an uppercase first letter for the for all subsequent words. So if I had multiple other words, I'd, every new word I'd use in a capital. So this is just coding. This is how we write our variables in coding. And um, what you'll notice is that when it comes on here, it's not going to look like that. But anytime you want to reference it in code, you want to write it like this, the way that you put it in here. Um, and this, again, is a float value. Okay. And then hit OK. So now you can see auto. See, it's capital and there's a space. But when you write it in code, you don't reference it that way. You reference it the, the way that we put it in. So now we have an auto spin value here. Oh, I'm sorry. We, you know what? We let me let me undo that and do that again. Uh, I did that. It's not supposed to be a float. It's supposed to be a boolean. It's just an on and off switch. Okay. So my fault there. Let's go ahead and modify add attribute. And again, auto spin. And this is boolean. Okay. So booleans are just switches. It's just it's either on or off. Okay. True, false. It's just it's it's one or the other. Zero and one. Um, and we're just going to use that to turn on the auto spin or turn it off. So it's either on or it's off. Uh, so that, that's what we needed to do. So hit OK when you've got this. So right now it says off. So we can turn it on and off. Okay, so the first thing we got to do is figure out how big our wheels are. We need to measure these wheels. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to bring back my geometry, my polygons. And then we're going to go to Create, uh, Measure Tool, Distance Tool. Okay, so that's going to give us the, we're going to use that to, to measure the radius. So the way I'm going to do this to make it easy is just bring it in the uh, side view here. And I'm just going to grid snap right now for right now. So hold down X and click, and it's going to put a locator. Now these locators are really huge. So what I'm going to do is just grid snap to somewhere straight up straight vertically up from there and now f you can see as I move this up and down that value obviously changes there let me select both these locators so I got them both selected and I'm going to just go to point two or something in the local scale for these locators so they're not so big okay so let's uh, get locator number two just bring that way down here and I need to snap to this point here so hold down V and I'm just going to on the y-axis here grab it get it going and then move my cursor to this point so that is basically the radius of the wheel um, from the the ground plane you can see is a little bit of uh, if we look real close this this goes a little bit below the grid line but you have to imagine that this will be smooth so it kind of smooths out you, you know you, you can you can be that accurate if you want um, and also remember that there is a um, let me see if I hit F here and go to the high poly tire. So that's probably the one that you're going to want to snap everything to. So we can take this lower locator, activate the Y axis, hold down V and middle mouse drag till it sort of hits there. Yeah, you know, this that's that's a little, you know, extreme there. If you, but if you want it to be perfectly uh, accurate, then that's fine. But uh, more or less, that'll work. You gotta you get it, get it as you know, pretty close, and this will be fine. So I'm gonna go ahead and hide the high poly tire again. So my radius here is about 0.896 or 0.897 if you want to round up. Okay, so that is my um, value there. Yours should be somewhere close if you're using this uh, this particular model here. Okay, so we're going to use an expression again because this, this uh, needs to be updated every frame here. So let's go ahead then, go to Windows, Animation Editors, and Expression Editor, and it was already there. So we need a new expression. Remember we have uh, the first four here. We just need to uh, make a new one here. We're going to call this Left Front uh, Auto. EXPR, so left front auto expression, and now we can we can r start to write our code here. Okay, so we're going to again declare a float variable and dollar sign radius. Okay, so this is our variable; it's called radius. But in order 
to be able to create the variable, you want to put a dollar sign in front of it so that Maya knows that it's it's your variable. And we're going to say equals, and we're going to take the value that this is here. So 0 0.897 in my case. So 0 0.897. Okay. I'm going to go to three decimal places accuracy, and then we'll end that. So we've taken, we've made a variable called radius, and we've assigned the actual radius of the wheel. Okay, so there we go. And now we're going to do a little bit of, of vector math here. So vectors are properties that have magnitude and direction. So, um, you know, the, I, we're not going to get too deep into what that is here. Um, you know, you can certainly go do some research if you'd like to do that. But it basically, um, you can calculate what direction something's going and the magnitude is of that is basically the distance so if you got two points um, and you're going from one point to another point you have a vector which is if you draw an arrow from one point to the second point that's your vector and then your magnitude is actually the length of that arrow so if you if you can visualize that 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 is your magnitude so <coughs> We, vectors uh, are used as a variable, just like a float is a float type variable. You can also have a vector variable. So we're going to type in vector. So <clears throat> this variable is going to be the old position vector. So dollar sign old POS vector. Okay, so that's the old position vector. So that's the vector that it was in the previous frame. Equals. And we need to get the world space location of that variable. I mean, of that uh, of that uh, group. Remember, we made a group called left. Uh, we're going to start with the left front old position. So left front old position, that group right there. We're gonna we're gonna query that vector. We're gonna find out what that where it it exists in world space. Okay, that's gonna give us that vector. So now the way that we code this is a little funky. We gotta use, and I, I, I forget what they call this symbol. If you look at the tilde key, that is the top left, right below the escape key on, on, on a keyboard. Uh, it's that little, it looks like an apostrophe, but it's not an apostrophe. I, I totally forgot what they call this thing, but it's on the same key as the tilde. So if you hold down shift and hit that, you get the tilde uh, symbol there. But if you just hit it directly, you get this, this thing here. Um, and then X form. And dash Q means we're going to query the value, okay? Uh, dash WS means we want the world space value, not a local space value. We want it in world space units. So uh, because it's a child of that uh, top level group there, it's in the local space of that. But we want it you know, in sort of a world space uh, value. Um, dash T, we want the translate values. So if it was dash RB rotate, we want the translate values. And then we got to give it what thing we're trying to track here. So that is the left front, oops, uh, old POS. And we put that in quotes because it is a string, meaning that it's text. And then we need to put another one of these weird little symbol things okay so that is that is quite you know a pretty confusing little chunk of code here so x form is just your transform values so if you want to find out where something is or what the rotation values are in something or what the translate values are in something you use the x form command and dot uh, dash q these are called flags each one of these with a dash in front of it is called a flag uh, dash q means we're going to query the value it means all we're doing is looking for the value if this was a dash E, it means we want to edit the value. So if we want to move something to a specific point, we would use dash E so we can edit that value. Dash w w L WS tells us to we want the, the world space value. We don't want the value relative to its parent. We want the world space value. Where does it exist in world space? And then dash T is the translates. We want the translate values of... Uh, of this thing that we've defined inside the quotes. And the reason that we use these symbols right here is because we want this command to run first before this assignment is done. So it's got to run this command and get a value back and then 
plug that into the old position vector. So that's why we use those. Uh, kind of, you know, kind of annoying, but it is what it is. And then we need to close off the command by putting a semicolon. Okay. So next one, vector. Again, we want to we want another vector variable, and this time we want to find we want to know the current position. Okay. So the old position vector is telling us where it was last frame according to this group here. The current position is where that joint is right now in this frame. So dollar sign uh, current POS vector. Okay, so the current position vector equals, and it's a very similar piece of code, this symbol thing there, and we're going to do an X form. Okay, dash Q again. We're going to query that. Dash WS again. Dash T again. Okay, world space, we want the translates. And this time what we're, what we're uh, looking for is the left front auto wheel spin. I'm sorry, not auto wheel, just auto spin joint. Okay, and close the, quote, the, the quotes there. And then put that little symbol on there and then put the semicolon. Okay, so this is going to give us where that uh, where that joint was last frame and this is this current position is where it's going to give it to us in the current frame wherever that is okay so this is going to give us two different positions if the car is moving if the car is not moving that value is going to be the same and you're going to get no rotation okay so if the value is the same that means the car is standing still at least between those two frames there was no movement so don't rotate the tire at all if there was movement now we can now we have those two positions so last frame it was over there this frame it's here and we can create a vector between those two to to find out you know how much motion we've had right so the further away these two points are from each other the greater the magnitude of that vector is right the closer they are me the, the closer they are the, the lower the magnitude is means it hasn't moved that far since last frame so the faster something is moving the more distance it's going to cover per frame than something moving slowly and so then we can take those two points and calculate how much to rotate okay next vector and this one is what i'm going to call the motion vector so motion vector i spelled that right yep is equal to so the motion vector is the vector between those two so the way that these vectors are calculus let's go back to the old position vector the way that this is calculated is is calculated from the origin so the, from the origin to where this group is the left front old position is that vector and then the current position vector is from the origin to where this joint is that's that vector and the motion vector is between those two points the old position and the current position is going to draw a vector between those two, and that's how much motion we've had. So that's why we call it the motion vector. And all we, and this is very easy. It's just vector math here. So all we got to do here is subtract the old position vector from the current position vector. So equals uh, dollar sign, and I'm just going to copy and paste these because that uh, I like to copy and paste the variable names because that il that will eliminate the chances that I might misspell something and have this not work. So, uh, select this, control C, paste that there, minus the old position vector. So I'm going to copy this and paste that there, and semicolon. So all this is going to give me is a new vector that represents the uh, the travel between the, the old position and the current position okay that's what this gives me here okay so now we can come down here now that we have that we can make a new float float variable and we'll call this distance okay distance equals mag of motion uh, I'll make sure we get our like let's go ahead and just copy this so that I don't misspell it paste that in there and semicolon so mag 
is magnitude. This is this is a, a procedure or function that you can plug a value in. You give it a vector value, and it'll tell you the magnitude of that vector. And remember, the magnitude is just the distance between the two points. So if there's a big gap between those two points, then you're going to have a bigger magnitude because that's more distance. If it's a small gap, the magnitude is lower. So this is just going to take that vector and calculate that magnitude which is equal to basically the distance that's been traveled from last frame to this frame. Okay, so that's that's all that is. And mag, it's just a built-in function um, that you can plug your, your vectors into. So any vector value that you have, you can plug it in here. It'll give you the magnitude. It'll just return the magnitude, and it'll plug it into the distance attribute. Okay, so now we have the vector. We have the distance. Uh, we have the magnitude, I should say. Okay. So now we have all these, we can calculate exactly how much extra rotation to add to the wheel. Okay, so if you've traveled, let's say the wheel has a circumference of five units. And you, between last frame and this frame, you've traveled exactly, your magnitude is exactly five units. So basically what it's going to do is going to rotate one complete revolution of the wheel. So... Essentially, this is how we're going to calculate this. So, um, left front auto spin, and yeah, see, I see. I want to let, let's go ahead and uh, just copy this because, as you can see, I've just completely, <laughs> I've completely misspelled that. So let's go ahead and uh, just copy. I like it's, it's a good idea to get in that habit because you'll have less errors that way. So rotate x. So we're going to take the existing rotate x value of that front auto spin joint. And we're going to say equals. And I'm just going to copy this. So equals that same value what's already in there. Plus. And let me let's go. Let me just go ahead and make this bigger. Um, plus, And this is this is a little. Uh, formula that we're going to use here. So to find the circumference of a circle, if we're using the circumference equation here, uh, circumference equals 2 pi r. Okay, so if you think about a circle, if you want to know the circumference of that circle, that is a formula that you would use there. So we know the radius because we measured it, that's that 0.897 value right there. So 2 pi r or 2 times pi, or tau, which is 2 pi. So 2 times pi times the radius value is going to tell you the circumference of the tire. So once you have that value, so let me pull up a calculator here so that we can um, see that. Uh, see. Our circumference is going to be 2 times par, pi, so 3.1, you know, you can decide how far you want to take pi. I'm just going to call it 3.14 times 2 equals that, 6.28. And then we're going to multiply that by our radius, which is 0.897. So that is the circumference of my wheel, is 5.633. Okay? So basically, if between this frame and the last frame we've traveled exactly 5.63 Units, that means the tire has rotate has rotated exactly one time. Now you have to be moving pretty fast to to travel 5.63 units in a single frame. That car has to be really hauling. But let's just for the sake of making this simple, 5.63. If we travel that distance in one frame, then we've done exactly one revolution of the tire. Okay. If we've traveled anything less than 5.63 then we have done less than one revolution of a tire. If we've traveled anything more than that, well, then we've actually rotated more than one revolution. Okay, so that, that is how we're going to sort of figure out um, how much to rotate the car. So we're going to look at the value that we get from uh, our distance. So we're going to look at the distance, and then we're going to, we're going to, divide the distance by the circumference of the tire. So, for example, if, what did I say this was? So, 5.63. If our distance is 5.63, well, 
I want to divide that by this 5.63, which will give us a value of 1, right? Which is going to basically one rotation. I want to take that 1 and multiply it by 360 because we need, it, we need this value in degrees, okay? Um, so, which will, when you multiply 1 by 360, you get 360, so that's how many degrees you got to rotate, Okay, so that's exactly how we're going to do it. If, say, our distance is exactly half of 5.63, so what we get is, you know, let, let, let's use simple, simpler numbers here. Say our, say our uh, circumference is 10, okay? So I'm going to just put a 10 in here. And our distance is 5. So we've traveled 5 units uh, between last frame and this frame, and our circumference is 10. We're going to take 5 divided by 10, right, uh, and that value, a 0.5, then we take that 0.5, multiply it by 360, which will give you half of that, 180. So we're going to do a rotation of 180 degrees between last frame and this frame. And then you would move on to the next frame, and this current frame would now become the old frame, and the, future, the, the next frame up would become the current frame, and you'd run this again. So for each frame, you would calculate exactly how much rotation to do, uh, depending on the speed. And this is why the car can then increase or decrease speed, and it won't, it won't make a difference to the calculations because we're just calculating one frame's worth of movement. And that's a small enough increment that we can have a very smooth increasing and decreasing of speed. Um, according to to how much we've moved so that that's a very nice thing about this so what that's what's that going to look like so in here we're going to type in uh we're going to open up two parentheses here and distance so we're going to take whatever that distance is whatever it is and we're going to divide it by and this is where we do the the circumference calculation so two two pi R, so 2 times pi times radius, uh, which if we take 2 times pi, that's 6.283, okay, 3.14 something something times 2, and we're going to multiply that by the radius that we've already specified up there, radius, okay, and we're going to close our parentheses here, so we had two opening, and actually we have three opening, so we still have to close off this, this third one. And then we're going to take the result of all that and multiply it by the 360 because we need this in degrees and then close that off there. Okay, so again, we take our distance. So again, if our, if our circumference is 10, so if this gives us a 10, it gives us a 10, and our distance is only 5, uh, 5 divided by 10 is 0 0.5. We're going to take that 0 0.5 that we get out of this, Multiply it by 360, and that's going to give us 180. So we're just going to rotate 180 degrees. Okay, so we're just we're just this is basically just calculating the factor that we have to use to determine what percentage of 360 this has to be. If this is 20 and this is 10, 20 divided by 10 is 2. This is going to be multiplied by 2. So we're going to have a double rotation, okay? So that, that's essentially how that works. Now, one extra thing that I'm going to do here is I'm going to multiply all of that by the left front control dot auto spin. So that is the auto spin attribute that is on the control. Remember that it's a Boolean attribute. It's either on or off. And on or off in Maya means 0 or 1. So if we take all this stuff and we multiply it by 0, it's going to give, it's going to basically set this to 0. Uh, so we're going to be adding 0 to the existing rotation on that uh, joint. So there'll be no rotation. So basically, if your auto spin attribute is turned off, this is how we get this formula not to update. It's still going to be calculated, but because this is zero, you're multiplying by zero, you get back zero, so there's going to be no rotation. And then if that thing is on, it's going to be one, and 
you multiply anything by one, you get the same thing. So that's not going to affect the the uh, uh, the calculations at all. Okay. So this is just an easy way using the code to to turn on or turn off the calculations is using that attribute. If it's zero, it's going to just this is going to be multiplied by zero. So it's going to be this value that's in here plus zero. So the values are essentially not going to change. If this is one, then this is going to calculate. You're going to get whatever value you get multiplied by one, which will just give you that same value. So that value is then going to be added to whatever is already in there. Okay, so hope that's not uh, too confusing there. Uh, you just got to sort of break it down into its pieces to, to really understand it. Okay, so that's going to calculate all our um, uh, rotations for there. Okay. Now that we've done that and we've, uh, we've actually inserted the, the extra rotation into that joint, now what we need to do is update the old position group to the current position so that when we go to the next frame, when that current position on the, when that joint has moved some more and it's got a new current position, this current position from the old frame becomes the old position. So to do that, we're going to use X form again. Except this time we're not going to query it. We're actually going to uh, to adjust it. So dash t. Okay. So we are setting the translate values. Okay. So and we're going to when we're setting the translate values, we got to give it three values because there's a translate x, y, and z. So we need to give it uh, three values in here. So the first value is, uh, and I'm just going to copy this here that way I don't misspell it so the current position vector dot X so we're saying we want the X value of the current position vector we're gonna put that in there and I'm just gonna copy this whole thing here so we want to put a space put another space paste that so this is Y and this is Z okay so we can break down the the vector values into their X Y and Z components and we can access those separately. So we're just going to set the translate values of left, front. So I'm doing it again. Let's go ahead and uh, left, front, old position. That group right there, we want to paste that in there. So all we're doing is we're saying take the current position vectors, x, y, and z values, and plug them into the left front old position. So we're just moving because we've now you we, we don't need it to be where it was. We need to bring it to to the current position of the joint. We're going to take the x, y, and z values of the current position vector and plug them into the old position group so that so that it is in that position next frame when the joint itself has moved. So we can then calculate again. So we're just updating that uh, uh, that group. Okay, and then again, I'm just going to do this this thing we did before. So if frame, if I learn how to spell, equals 1, again, we're doing a comparison, so we use the double equals. So I'm going to open some curly braces and, oh, and close them. There we go. I'm going to hit tab just so we go in with it a little bit. And I want the left front auto spin joint rotate X equals zero. So that way the, the numbers don't just keep accumulating, getting bigger and bigger. I want to make sure that I just, if I go back to frame one, just reset the whole thing back to zero. Okay. So I'm going to copy this just in case something bad happens. And I'm going to hit the create button down here. Uh, let me minimize this. So if, if I get an error, this is going to turn red and it's going to give me an error. So hit create, nothing. So that looks like it worked fine. And before I, I duplicate this for all the other frames, I'm going to test it. So let's go in the perspective here. Okay. Uh, I would save your file. It might be a good time to increment your save. Okay. So let's see if this will work. Now, this won't work un unless you have animation on your uh, uh, move control here. So let's go ahead. I'm at frame one. I'm going to hit S to set a keyframe. Then I'm going to go to, say, frame 40 or 42, whatever. I'm just going to move this forward a little bit and hit S again. So 
there we go. So if I play it, we'll look at the left front wheel, see no rotation. Okay. Why is there no rotation? Because this attribute is set to off. So auto spin is off, so it's not going to spin automatically. I'm going to set this to one or on. And let's play it again. And you can see now when I do that, my, my tire will rotate. And it rotates. And you can see that the car sort of gains speed slowly and then slows down. It's not, it's not a, an abrupt uh, start and stop. Let's stop this, rewind it. And we slow down to nothing. Okay, so that is, in fact, working. So let's go ahead. I'm going to go back to frame, uh, frame one, which is going to zero everything out. And so we can come in here now. I've copied this and I'm going to make a new expression. So right front auto EXPR. And I'm just going to paste this in here. And this expression is a little bit longer, so you got to be careful with replacing um, this. So just all the uh, L underscores, replace them with R underscores, and make sure you don't miss any. Take the time to to get them all done because if you don't uh, things aren't going to work the way that you want them to okay let me look over this go line by line here are 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 there are there are there are there and are there okay so let's hit create that created that again and that was the right front wheel so right now it's set to off. Let's test it with it off. No rotation. That's right. And we'll turn this on. And there we go. Okay. So that works. Let's keep, uh, let's keep going here. Um, new expression. Let's do left rear. Oops. Turn caps lock off. Left rear um, auto expression and we're going to plug this in here and now we want to plug rear so I'm just going to copy the word rear and anytime I see the word front I'm going to put that in there da, 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 da. and it was you know all the wheels are the same so I don't need to mess with that uh, radius value rear 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 and rear make sure that i didn't mess that up rear is there one there one there i think i got them all hit create so let's go to the left rear tire right now it's set to off i'm gonna play it i get no rotation okay so did you see that that front wheel started acting funny so clearly i missed something somewhere so let's see here, left rear, left rear, left rear, left rear, left rear. Ah, see, I forgot the front. I, this front is still here, so this should be rear, so that because now it's messing with the front old position vector, and that's that's completely breaking my front wheel. So let's go ahead, make that change, and hit edit. And now let's look at it again. Okay, front wheel's back to what it was. The back wheel is still off, so let's turn this on. And now they both work, so front and rear. Excellent. So that, that now works. And, of course, the last one is the right rear, so I'm just going to take copy the expression from the left rear and make a new expression, so right rear auto expression and let's paste this in here and then I'm just all these L underscores gonna replace with R underscores there 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 and there and then yeah let's not forget that guy and then one here as well okay hit create and now on the right side, it's off. Let's make sure that nothing, so that's, that is off. Set this to on. And there we go. We have, yeah, let's just look at all four wheels at once. Yep, 
so we're rotating perfectly on all four wheels there we go okay so that's your auto rotation if you want you can uh let's if we let's delete this keyframe here and maybe make this a longer run here and set another key and you'll see that i have not adjusted anything except the, the two keyframes that i have here and you can see that the faster it goes the faster the wheels spin okay so there you go this is working fine so now i can just go ahead and right click on here and break connections it's going to get rid of all those keyframes now that i'm back at zero and as i played nothing out you see that when there's no movement when there's no animation on this the wheels are not going to spin even though i am playing i'm not going to get any spinning so it's all dependent on the speed of the control so that is very convenient um and that's that's uh that's how that works now this might be all well and good the problem is um the the car is scalable okay so there's, there's actually a couple a few things here um if i scale my car so if i take my master control here and i'm going to scale up my car to you know more than double the size so let's go ahead and, and uh, re-key this, this uh, move control. So I'm going to set a key at frame 1, go to, say, frame 40 around there, and move it forward a little bit and set another key. So you can see that now what happens. So let's, let me just set this to 40. What is it, 41? Just so that we can loop this over and over. So notice how my wheels are sliding now. All right, let's let's look at let's look at it real close. The wheels are not uh, rotating the way they should. That's because the car has uh, changed scale. Okay, so if I make this really big, then you could really see it. See how those wheels are spinning really fast, even though the car is not. That's because the wheels are no longer the radius that they were before, because the whole car has grown in size. So that is presenting a problem where this only works if the scale is at 1. So if I set my master control scale to 1, you can see that the, the wheels are spinning perfectly. They don't slip. But as soon as I scale it up or down, it becomes an inaccurate expression. Okay, and the reason for that, so let's uh, rewind this. And you know what? Now, while I'm here, before we continue here, I forgot to... Make sure that my master control had its pivot on the floor. So what I, when I'm scaling, notice how my wheels eventually go through the floor. It's because my pivot's in the wrong place. So just hold down DNX and snap that down to the grid. And now your wheels will always stay on the grid no matter how big the car is. So a uh, minor thing there. Easy fix. Um, okay. So we need to update the radius value. Uh as the car grows so as if the car doubles in size the radius value needs to double in size to keep this formula correct and the problem here is that if i go back here where is windows animation editors let's open the expression editor again and let's select one of these auto expressions right we we hard coded let me just enlarge this uh we hard coded this is called hard coding when you put in explicit numbers like that instead of using variables um you are kind of limiting your code because now this is this value will never change that that's what it is so that's called hard coding um we need to change this so that this value changes accordingly as the car is being scaled up or down um okay so the way that we're going to do that is we're gonna, with the ma on the master control i'm going to add a new attribute so let me minimize this let's go to modify add attribute and this is going to be a float value. It's going to be called radius. Oh, let's make this lowercase. And the default value for this radius is going to be that 0.89, what did I say, 0.897. Um, I think that's what it was. Is it? So that is... Yeah, 0.897. So my default value is going to be 
seven. Okay, so that is the default at scale of one, that is a default value. Okay, so hit okay. So there's my radius. Uh, I'm gonna load up my node editor. And give it a sec here. Okay, I'm just going to make a new tab here. I'm going to put this in a new tab. So I'm going to load up my master control. So with the master control selected, hit the plus sign there. Uh, and then we need a new multiply divide node. So tab, multiply divide, make a new node right there. Okay, and select both of these and hit P because, again, it's turned itself off. So, you know, I, I don't even bother with this half the time because it, it gets turned off every time I close the node editor. It's just kind of annoying. But anyway, um, let's open up the input 1x here and our output. Okay. Uh, double click the multiply divide node here. And we're going to call this radius scale mult just so that it has a name. And double click on it, input 1x, which is this value right here, is 0 0.897. That is our uh, radius value for the wheel. So the, the default radius value for the wheel is right there. And then into uh, the, the scale y value, that's the, that's the value that we use for scaling. So let's, let's go ahead and open this scale right here. Um, the scale y, scale y value is what the current scale of the car is. So we're going to plug this. We're going to open up input 2, and we're going to plug the scale y into input 2x. So right now we're at 1, so there it is right there. You see it lit up. So right now 0 0.897 times, because we're multiplying, times whatever the scale is, in this case 1, is just going to return a 0 0.897. And... Then what we're going to do is take your output x value. Oh, no, here we go. Output x. And we're going to plug it into the radius on the master control. So if we look at this, it's 0.897 because this is just 0.897 times 1. So let's, let's take our scale on the master control, say 2. Notice how this automatically updates. So now our radius is go is 1.794 which is double what it was before if we go 0.5 our scale is half of what it was before our, i'm sorry our radius is half of what it was before if we go back to one we're back to 0.897 okay so this will this is going to keep track of that and make sure that we're using the correct value for our wheel rotation no matter the size of the car okay and then now that that's connected, we can lock and hide the radius value because that's not something that anybody needs to mess with, right? It's all set up. Uh, the animator who's going to be animating this needs doesn't need to ever see that. So let's go ahead then and close this, and let's bring back our expression editor. So we need to fix this so that it references the radius value instead of just having a, a hard-coded number in there. Okay, so the way that we're going to do that is we're going to plug in here instead of a uh, the, the number we're going to get access that radius value on the master control so master uh control and of course you got to make sure you spell everything correctly dot radius okay so the radius is actually whatever is in the master control radius value that's now hidden is going to be plugged into here so this makes you way more flexible okay so let's hit edit and looks like we didn't have any problems okay so let me where was i here uh so that that's the change that we need to make here so let's see this and that was for the right front auto so that's the right front wheel so i'm gonna take this and i'm gonna scale my car up to be five times as big as it was and i don't so do i still have my keyframes yes i do so the other wheels are still the old formula. So let me, let's loop this. 
Notice though that the right front wheel is now spinning correctly. The other ones are, are still the old formula because I didn't update those yet. And they're spinning weirdly because the radius is still using the wrong value. But the right front wheel is the one I updated and you can see that that's spinning correctly. Okay, so uh, that is why you use variables instead of you know, hard numbers like that, like what we had before. So I'm just going to copy this uh, mask, and then I'm going to go to each one of these and plug this in here and hit edit. Go to this one, plug that in there, hit edit, and one last one, this one here. Replace that and hit edit. So now, if we start over, all the wheels are now rotating correctly even though the car is five times as big as it was and then if I go back to one in the scale here so back to its original size and still the wheels are rotating exactly as they're supposed to okay so that is just something that we had to put in there to account for because you never know you know maybe the scene that that the car is being put into was not modeled at the same scale so you have to scale the car up or down to get it to to uh, be the right size you don't want your rig to break down because of that so that is how we do that okay um and basically the rig is pretty much done here we just need to do a little a few uh, cleanup things here um Let's make it so we can uh, show and hide things in the, we, from the master control. So select your master control, go to modify, let's go to add attribute. And we want a Boolean attribute here called controls. And I make it all caps. I'm going to hit add and then we're going to do another one called geometry. I spell that right, geometry, yep. And we're going to add that. Okay, so there we have controls and geometry. And let's just go ahead and uh, collapse this so we can see what we're doing here. Um, so we're going to use the node editor again. So Windows, node editor. And this node editor is taking a second here. There we go. Uh, since we, we have our master control here, which is what we're going to use, I'm going to select both uh, the controls group and the geometry group and I'm going to load those so hit the plus there they are so we are going to take our controls value right here those are the new attributes plug that into uh, what are we doing here visibility and then take the geometry group here uh, attribute here and plug that into visibility on the geometry group Okay, so controls goes to the visibility on controls. Geometry goes to the visibility on geometry. And then also we want to load up the move control. So select the, where did it go? There it is, move control. And we're going to add that to the graph. So there it is there. And controls goes to the visibility on the move control okay um, okay so there everything disappeared that's because these are off by default so if I hit turn on geometry my car should pop back up and if I turn on controls all my controls should come back okay so that that's an easy way when you're done animating you can turn off the controls just to watch your animation work and you can even turn off the uh, wireframe here uh, and then watch your animation then if you need to tweak things you can turn them back on and they're back okay uh, and then what we can do is now if you want you can select your your main body joint here and put a controls attribute on the master control so right you controls joint. you can do joints and have that hide and uh, show the main body joint but just be aware that if the controls are off that's going to disappear even if the if the uh, joints little switch on here is, is on just because that's that's uh, a child of the uh, move control so that's just a side effect there 
Um, then we want to make it so we can't select the geometry of the car. Animators want to be able to drag a selection around their controls and only select controls and not select the uh, geometry. So let's add another attribute to the uh, master control. So modify, add attribute. This is going to be an enum at, uh, attribute. And we're going to call this one geo display. Geo display. And I need to be lowercase. Geo display. Okay. And we need to change the values here. So if you click on the first one, we're going to rename this to, what do we want here? Normal. Then click the second one here. This is going to be template. And then we're going to click the empty space below that one. And they're going to set this one to reference. Okay, you can hit enter. Now we got three values in here. And then hit OK. Okay, so now we have three values here, normal, template, and reference. So we're going to select our geometry group right here. We're going to go in the attribute editor. We're going to go into, let's, let's close all these things right here, limits. Uh, we're going to go display. We're going to go to drawing overrides, and we're going to enable overrides. Okay, and... So once we've done that, we're going to bring back our node editor. I think, yep, there it is. And we're going to look. So we have our um, geometry group right here. And we want to connect this to the override display type, this guy right here. So as you can see, it says normal template reference, just like what we just did. Um, and we did them in the same order, that's important. But to be able to access that, we're going to have to use some tricks here. So right here, Geo Display. And we're going to click on that. It's going to bring out a, a, a connection here. And then we're going to click here. And we're going to go to Other. Then we're going to scroll down. See where it is here. Uh, wait, let's see. Takes a minute to find them here, so under, oh, where'd you go? Um, okay, it took me a second there, uh, but it's under draw override. It's grayed out, so my I was just sort of jumping over it uh, because it was grayed out. I forget that, it, that those are grayed out, so you got to hit this little plus sign here and then click on override display type, and it's going to make that connection for you. Okay, so now when you do that, um, if we now select this, so when geometry is set to normal, so if we go to the master control, right now it's set to normal, it means you can select the geometry. If you set it to template, it's going to do that. And then if you set it to reference, it's going to make it look like it's normal, but you can no longer select that geometry. No matter what you do, you can't select it. And that's, that's the mode I like to leave it in for the animator because... Um, they don't want to be able to select the geometry. Okay, so there we go. Um, one thing you could do, if you don't want to see these joints, you just want to see the controls, and I just want to make sure, yeah. So if you select your main body joint and hit Control H, that's going to hide those joints. And same thing with these here, Control H. Well, that'll hide them, and then you don't have to worry about joints. So now you can select Controls. And you don't have to worry about joints. You can get rid of this measure tool here. So get rid of that. Delete that. Um, all these extra things that we used here that can be now deleted. And in fact, what I would do at this point, let me close this. Uh, what I would do at this point is, you can see now, this rig can collapse down to a single, let's get rid of this curve here, can collapse down to a single node here. What I would do is select this. Go file, export selection, and go save it in a new file because who knows what's, what's now in this file. Um, and, and there you go. Uh, so just put it in a new file, and then you can hand it off to the animator to do their animation. Okay? Uh, and one thing, I guess one, one more thing that we can do here. Um, in our master control, so we got our, we got our master control, we got our geometry group here. Um, and we'll probably want to do that on uh, 
the move control as well. So geometry, move control, master control. Uh, what we can do is lock and hide visibility. So lock and hide selected. Okay. So there is the rig. It is now essentially complete. And it'll animate and do what you need it to do. And there we go. Okay. So what last thing I'm going to do. Uh, before I call this one here done is uh, I'm going to show you how to put it on a curve. Oh, you know what? I still have keyframes on this uh, move control. So make sure we break those connections to get rid of those keyframes. Okay, so leave the card in its default position. Save your file. And that should be good. So next, next thing we need to do is... Uh, I'm going to show you how to attach it to a curve and have it go where you need it to go. So being able to animate this car along a curve is very convenient. Uh, if you're given a road set that has, you know, a, the road, it goes up and down, up hills, whatever. Generally, you can always just grab maybe the center line uh, edge loop and convert that to a curve and, and right there you have a way to constrain your car to that road and it's very convenient um, so that's why we set this car up the way that we did that's why with the move control you can see that the pivot point is actually on the floor it's not centered to the uh, control and, and raised up off the floor and again that's because I want to be able to do to attach this to a curve so I'm going to go ahead and make a curve. I'm using my EP curve tool again. Let's go in the tool settings. What I want to do is make sure that it's set to cubic. Okay. Uh, this is very important. Now, if it's a linear curve, you're going to get very jagged movement. Um, and it's not going to, it's not going to feel right. You need, you need it to be a cubic curve so that there's actually some curvature to it. So I'm just going to hold down X and I'm going to start, um, I'm going to just grid snapping here. The first few points, I want to be in a straight line so that the car can start straight before it starts to turn and do whatever else. So let's go ahead and then you can start to, and don't worry too much about the shape because we can always tweak it. So just, you know, start to do some somewhat random path like that. Let's call that good. Uh, right click, I'm going to go into control vertex. And so it's not just completely flat. We can actually raise up some of these sections. And we can tweak the shape a little bit, maybe more like this. Something like that. And if we don't need a point, you can just delete it. Okay. Let's go ahead and maybe raise this. Oops. Raise these ones up a little bit here, just so that it's not a, f a flat road. It's just give it some, give, make it three dimensional. Um, just to show that this car it, it will just follow the curve. No matter how that curve goes, the car will follow that. Uh, so, you know, you, you'd obviously want to take the time to tweak this and make it look nice uh, and get it looking the way that you want it to look. Let's go ahead and put a thousand frames in our timeline here. Uh, okay, so I'm going to select the move control and then shift select my curve. Uh, and then we're going to, under under the rigging menu set here, we're going to go to constraint, we're going to go to motion path, attach to motion path, let's go in the options. So I'm going to tell it to use my time slider, and I have a thousand frames in there. If not, you can always tell it to, to uh, you can set the, the start and end yourself. I'm going to tell it to follow. The front axis is going to be our z-axis because the car is facing forward in the z-axis, so that's our front axis. And then our up axis is Y because Maya's default is Y is up. World up type is vector and world up type vector is the Y axis as well. Okay. If you want this thing to bank around quarters, you can turn on bank. Uh, this, this is great if you're doing aircraft and they're, as they turn, they sort of bank according to that. Now, so there are some roads that have a, a, a when they go around the curve, they sort of bank. So if you have that in your scene, you can do that. I'm not going to do that here. So if we hit uh, attach... You'll see that that uh, the pivot point snaps the beginning of the curve, so it just moves it there. And because the the pivot point is down on the ground plane, 
and not up here in line with with the curve, uh, the car is still sitting on the ground plane. It didn't get sunk into the ground. Okay, so then if you hit play, you'll see that it starts to go and it's going to follow that curve and the wheels of course because the auto rotation is turned on the wheels are turning and they're turning correctly so as you can see let me enlarge the screen here so we can see that the car is going up that slope and it's going to come down and it, it's just constrained to that path perfectly and as it comes in, we want to watch it as it comes in to slow down here. Okay, and then it slows down. The wheels are turning just right, and it comes to a stop. Okay, so there we go. That, and I can even scrub the timeline. And you can see that my... Wheels are rotating correctly right up until it stops. Okay, so you get all that automatically just from constraining to the curve combined with the wheel rotation. Um, you get that. And the nice thing about this, because it's a live connection, if I want to change the shape of my road here, you can see that the car will move with that. Okay, so... If you decide you want to change the road, you want to raise it up over here, the car will raise up just like that. Okay, so um, that's it's it's very flexible, very nice. Now, obviously, the turning of the wheels as you go around the curves is not happening. You would have to go in and animate that. Uh, that part is not automatic, but the, the actual movement along there is good. So you just have to put in the uh, rotation of the turning of the wheels as you, as you go around the corners. Because right now, they're just staying straight. Um... So yeah, that's that's pretty much it. Uh, one thing to note though is if you are going to constrain this to a curve, these values now become locked up because they are uh, constrained. Uh, the translates and rotates are now constrained. So there's our motion path right there. So this now you can't really animate by hand. But for you know, it's it's going to depend on the shot that you're working on. If it's just driving down the road, then you don't really need to animate it by hand. Um, so you can do it that way. The other thing you can do if you really wanted to is instead of constraining your move control, you can constrain your master control. And if you constrain the master control, then the move control is now free for any extra sort of manual animation you want to do. So that's, that's the other way that you can do it uh, because they both have their pivot points on the floor. Um, so I would... You know, if you're going to do it that way, I would make sure that the pivot point for the master control is also in the same spot as the pivot point for the uh, move control. Uh, but you have options there. And then when the car comes to a stop, you can then animate the suspension as it sort of stops and then bounces in the suspension. And, you know, as you go around your, your scene, you know, if, you, if it's going on a bumpy road, you can, you know, adjust all this stuff here as needed. Um, so, you know. The flexibility is there. You can do it however you want. But that is pretty much the way that I do really quick rigs. This Again, this is not a super complex rig. It's a very simple rig for very simple animation if you need background cars. Um, and, you know, you can even do some pretty close-up stuff with this rig. It does it does work pretty well. Um, but if you, if you need all, you know, very special, you know, uh, suspension rigs and... and the, the turning mechanism under the car, you'd have to really crank up the complexity of the rig. But for very simple things, this will do you just fine. All right, so hope you enjoyed that one. Um, didn't take that long. And uh, I think it works pretty well. So there you go. Do Try it out, see if you like it, and feel free to add whatever you want to it to make it even better. Um, and uh, I guess we'll see you in the next video. All right. Bye.